you know, and I think also in the um, slides, it said that IBM Watson was not really a cognitive device, right? Could you explain why it's not actually a cognitive device? Is it because it doesn't interpret its own actions and learn yeah, from itself? Yeah. But then how does it play chess? <laughs> you know, how does that work? Uh, so you're talking about that uh, article uh, okay. uh, I got by, it. by, by oh. the, whom we are talking about, I'll tell you. So um, yeah, yeah, so um, it's a buffer. I lose, I lose the first message. Most of the most five messages. Uh, I'm going you mute. Uh, I'll say the most recent five messages. It's mute. I couldn't hear the present. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, tell message, right? So it, it grabs the Lem, message you. and name from here, from the URL. So when we're writing APIs in the future, our, our programs will, will call the name, well, we'll, we'll, we'll add a name and a message from like a URL like this. Let's say it's being accessed. If you want to return the entire result set, you, 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 uh, do you figure out how, function, can, can you see who is talking here? Set. Yeah, it's Lem. Can you return this as a uh, JSON if I wanted to? Okay, great. Okay, so I muted him. Yep. Um, um, so yeah, so it's part of the um, semantic cognitive perceptual. Uh, yeah, it, the, I don't know what article you're talking about, but in the slides, oh yeah, yeah, it, yeah, that article that you mentioned on the slide uh, where the guy said it's not actually cognitive no matter how much they uh, say it is. Yes. Can you explain why it's not besides, or, or it was it the reason that I said that it doesn't actually learn uh, from itself? It's just yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so Ro Roger uh, Shank is a very well known uh, cognitive scientist, and um, um, I now uh, let us uh, see if I can quickly get to the uh, link uh, to the article that he posted because. Um, I, I, it was a fantastic article and uh, let's see, oops. Yeah. See that link I want to press. Ah, we got it. So this is the article and uh, I think uh, I, I, I don't totally uh, remember it right away all the things he talked about it. Um, what um, uh, here is the uh, you know the rub here. So um, there is a advertisement that IBM put out and it says the computer brags it can read 800 million pages per second identifying key themes in Dylan's work like time passes and love fades and uh, 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 he kind of uh, claims uh, that Watson's ability to outthink human brains in the areas where finding insights and connections can be difficult due to uh, abundance of data. Uh, he says you can outthink cancer, outthink risk, outthink doubt, outthink computers if you embrace it, this idea of cognitive computing. And then there is another one here, uh, you know, uh, our number one uh, protest song, Bob Dylan protest song uh, went all out uh, and combined the folk protest movements in the 60s, blah, blah, blah. So, when you look at that, this is way overblown, um, you know, kind of uh, viewpoint of what the computer really does, the, what this particular computer uh, system program uh, called IBM Watson actually does. And uh, Roger goes through um, a number of reasons where it, it clarifies that, and it, it, you know, it makes it evident that the system doesn't really think. 
the system really doesn't have context. The system really doesn't, um, uh, uh, you know, understand. This um, um, uh, has come up in multiple uh, different contexts. Uh, recently, for example, uh, uh, look, this article was, uh, I mean, Watson was, this was, uh, you know, it was update 2021, but um, there was an earlier version was at least three years of, uh, earlier, if not four years uh, earlier. So, no, I, I gave this keynote in 2017. That means uh, this was around 2016 when this was written. Now, um, the interesting thing is um, with the GPT-3 and such also, uh, what you are really getting is natural language processing. So you, if you ask it a question, it would be, and if there is um, some content that supports that, uh, you know, that, that somehow matches with that question. <clears throat> so in the question, you have some uh, string, some text, it can match somewhere. And through linguistic manipulation, <clears throat> it can, present what is in the data corpus as a response to that question, then it may look intelligent. <clears throat> the fundamental thing is that it does not understand anything. So let me see if this is still there to uh, um, on. <clears throat> so last night at like midnight, I was giving this uh, keynote to uh, basically a semantic web workshop. And <clears throat> here is what happens. <coughs> Excuse me. You ask a question. Um, does the person have addiction? And the question is, I sometimes wonder how many alcoholics are relapsing under the lockdown. And then um, a sequence to sequence model would answer yes. And the true answer is yes. The reason is that um, in the corpus uh, that you would have analyzed, the GPT-3 system would have analyzed, there will be discussion about alcohol addiction and, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, a person who is alcoholic has addiction, that kind of <clears throat> connection can be made by linguistic and syntactic means. But you ask this question. So here's the context. Um, and you can see uh, highlighted terms. So you talk about depression, manic episode. They are not characteristics of depression. And um, uh, the question is, does the person suffer from depression? Answer would be yes. The true answer is no. Because there is, first of all, negation that isn't understood by the system very well. And there are reasoning that have to be applied. Manic episode is a characteristic of anxiety and not depression. So you need deeper understanding of and go beyond the syntax, in this case, involving mental health domain knowledge to correctly answer this question, right? So have, to have the cognition, to have a cognition, as you might have noticed in my paper and article is all about understanding, right? To, you have to understand that and for understanding that you need such knowledge. It is not evident from a large corpus of text that uh, GPT-3 would process. Other things they can't do well is this also multi-hop reasoning, right? Unless if, if the corpus ought, uh, directly says that static electricity can cause forest fire, uh, fire, great, the system will find it. But you have to reason that static electricity can cause sparks and sparks can start a forest fire and hence, uh, static electricity can cause a forest fire, then no, it won't be able to get to it, right? So, um, what Roger Shank uh, correctly says is that uh, these systems 
are doing amazing amount of statistical computation but they are not really understanding and so the cognition what you call uh, as what you might call human cognition and we, you can look up your dictionary definition for that that simply is not happening in the system in the context also they um, so you, you ask it to say why do you think so it will present to you the um, uh, text that is found that is supportive or potentially matches the question that's all it can do it can't explain like a doctor would saying i think this is an anxiety not a depression so in the realm of the chess world i guess it would be only picking the highly or the most suitable move by statistics and not actually responding to the player itself basically so it, it can't act too well to the surprise say some random surprise move that hasn't happened before I've, although i think our chess is all moved down but yeah i think the chess you are jumping to a very different situation because chess ends up being a uh, you know really a very solid um uh, uh, a, a chess ends up being a very uh, significant search problem so uh, let me see i had a couple of slides yesterday just talking about it it just so happens uh if i can get that um quickly here so this happens to be alpha go and the um um generally um the um self-learning techniques that they have done allows the program to go in a massively parallel way through all of the possible search and see which answer uh, which which leads you to the goal state and learn from that that i can reach this way and this is but this uh, this kind of after this step this is a good step it's like you're going through maze and uh, you go through all the dead ends and in you know, open ends and the computers can do that very efficiently and then it has figured out that in a backtracking that I want to reach a goal state that, you know, uh, all the steps that you took from the start state to reach there, it has the path. So now it can show you the forward path, the next step you can take and quickly reach to the uh, goal state. Now, this one are emerging, this one also start to incorporate uh, the uh, knowledge but in a very limited or fixed way. So all games have rules, right? And so you can encode the rules and improve the dumb, um, exhaustive st search strategy and uh, remove all the states that are not valid. Okay. And then, uh, for example, in some cases, um, uh, there will be books, let's say, how to play good chess or how to play, you know, what strategies you should use the names of the strategies and there is characteristics of those strategies and say if you have this particular you know um, you know uh, queen then you do this thing but if you have elephant you do this and that uh, in this situation you you should do this and that so the strategies themselves can be encoded as knowledge and can be provided so um, i have a colleague um, you know forest uh, agustelli uh, who uh, does work on gaming, AI for gaming. And so he and I are talking and we just submitted a proposal uh, that talked about using knowledge graph to improve the gaming and making them more efficient uh, and, and perform better. Uh, now, the things can become more complicated, more interesting. So this is the example of AlphaFold, uh, Alpha which is uh, considered to be one of the biggest scientific innovation of the last year 2020 uh, because it deals with a very uh, difficult problem uh, until now it has been extremely difficult uh, to take um, a, a sequence of amino acids and come up with um, a useful protein folding um, and uh, it requires um, <clears throat> you know in variety of uh, uh, structural um, uh, context, uh, you know, the, 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 this, this process takes place. 
but this particular um, uh, system was interesting in that it would take the leverage the knowledge from protein data bank to explore and exploit the possibilities and additionally we uh, uh, you know where we are planning to look into the issue of infusing more knowledge uh, uh, not necessarily to find a valid protein folding structure but to find a useful protein structure that's a big different thing right so what are the plausible structures is uh, something that can be done without with little knowledge so i'll give you an example that i understand a little better uh, when you do pharmaceutical drugs um, uh, well drugs are small molecules basically okay and um, uh, one is to actually synthesize a molecule because these are all synthetic molecules they some of them don't uh, occur in nature many of them don't occur in nature so you're synthesizing it so you're using generative models to create all kinds of structures but um, before you may have very structure that, in stable structure but you have to do toxicity profile you have to do solubility uh, studies because the drug has to be metabolized and the drug should not um, cause toxicity in the body now the idea is to find a drug molecule that is viable for making a pharmaceutical drug not just the drug molecule that can be made to exist that requires infusion of the knowledge about toxicity and solubility so now here we are building very um, you know uh, uh, you know uh, we, we hope that you know again uh, it's a large proposal with stanford berkeley uh, maryland um, uh, ohio state and georgia tech and uh, we'll see if it gets funded we'll do that work if not we'll, we'll do something else but this is um, uh, the point here is that the collective things that you have seen in this, um, uh, you know, uh, paper and keynote uh, is about um, <clears throat> uh, the 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 the, the uh, role of knowledge is one of the things. Although we already talked to that uh, earlier, what I have tried to share with you in this, um, you know, um, work is a little next step to it, and I hope um, you got that. And if not. You should ask questions, but I hope uh, uh, you got some uh, insights into what you're looking for. Um, I have a kind of a comment or a question. So um, it kind of gets back to the cognitive question about uh, IBM Watson. But uh, the question I kind of have is, isn't this partly because of the current like architecture of computing that we have, um, like right? Uh, the third generation of AI is kind of based on neuromorphic uh, or uh, like uh, brain structure to like mimic the brain, um, like the chip uh, Lohiki with uh, Intel. Uh, isn't like our current computing hardware and everything also kind of to blame that we can't get a more abstract idea of uh, things because of the way our current like computers work? Yes. Uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, going into some deep thing, and I'm going to. Uh, this was Matthew Sharp, right? The asking question. Uh, pardon? I asked the first question. That's Peyton. Yeah, this, this is Peyton. This is Peyton. Okay, so um, uh, I'm going to uh, see if I can get, pull up something very quickly. Uh, I have a, uh, I have a, another seminar that I have taught in the past. Uh, uh, it's called uh, semantic cognitive perceptual computing. So this whole seminar is around the you know um, broad uh, contours of these particular uh, you know paper and uh, keynote and all that stuff. But um, here, uh, here is an article that I just shared. And so I have a group. So if people who are interested in this kind of stuff are welcome to join this group. Um, uh, and you'll um, um, uh, learn a lot more 
about um, uh, you know brain-inspired computing and um, the, the the simple part. And this is meant for uh, maybe uh, Peyton is aware of this, but uh, just for the broader um, uh, group, um, the uh, the simpler uh, you know point is that our computational uh, architecture is nowhere close to anywhere from brain. Um, for, to some extent, um, by uh, talking about um, uh, 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 neuron, and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, uh, because the word neuron um, uh, in the uh, AI has uh, has a syntactic um, similarity or equivalence with a neuro neuron in brain, uh, we are totally misled. Um, our uh, the, the uh, neural net or neural computing is uh, perhaps not at all close to the um, to what actually happens in the brain and the relatively complex ar architecture of the brain. Uh, and so, um, you know, in this particular thing, this uh, see here limitations of dumb neuron. Um, and uh, you know there is a lot of uh, um, the, I, I I can't go into all of the you know details here, but the point here is that in the brain we have a chemical process and the messages carry sort of something akin to a real number, as opposed to uh, in the uh, von Neumann uh, computing uh, where our encoding is just binary. So from binary level of computation to um, computation in the real brain there is a massive gap and there is just no way to uh, mimic two to the end compute uh, you know um, you know uh, computation to something that where instead of two you have some arbitrary large number so um, the brain uh, does much far fewer explicit com um, computations and and uh, our current computers and gpus can far beat out the brain in those kind of experience computation when you talk about uh, data in the forms of uh, digits and um uh you know uh, uh, you know binary uh, computer systems but there is there are a lot of things that brain does one is the simply the complexity of uh, the synapse and uh, neural uh, uh, neurons and things like that, but the other is the whole process. I alluded to that process in my keynote, and I don't know if you got that or not. But let me show you just one part of it. Exact understanding of what it means at a technical level uh, when IBM uses the term, but in the marketing sense, it has become rather popular. And you hit. Um, let me see if I can uh, get to what I want to say. <clears throat> So, so this is a simpler uh, computational form I have shown here, okay? Uh, uh, the, the the one here uh, about uh, using the knowledge in uh, uh, you know this uh, computing where uh, your ability directive process is going on. But the more interesting thing that I want to get to is let's see if I can find you. Oops, so is it somewhere else? Ha. Huh. So um, what happens, and this is a very interesting uh, example here, uh, uh, John Soa's perception cycle. And um, one thing that happens here, and maybe I'll just jump to this slide before I come back here again. Let me show you this particular slide that was, I was just discussing yesterday. That give you, uh, I'll give you a quick, quick, inside yeah this slide okay. so let's look at it <clears throat> uh, here is a very simple relatively very simple example where you basically have this text okay this is a paragraph in this article and then in the end though to understand this text there are a lot of things that can happen 
a neural parsing with self attention can identify what you think is highlight what what you see is highlighted here a use of bbpedia could uh, identify what you see in this red here and then use of snowmare city can identify these things like here you can see that some of these are very high uh, value items that you uh, identify when you identify here remember that this is a link to a concept in a knowledge graph that means you have an access to a whole variety of knowledge uh, around the world for example influenza is a disease or you know vector disease and that there are all these other vector diseases for example right uh, that are known to you so you can know variations you can know type of influenza blah 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 so all that come into the picture and is available for processing and it's not just the annotation that you see here and the syntactical uh, you know uh, labeling of that so that you know so uh, as that happens you start um, um, essentially um, uh, uh, let's see where is the uh, so you start you know basically uh, having these um, you know, uh, understand, uh, 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 um, I guess, understanding of these entities. Um, now, uh, what you uh, what you need to keep in mind is that there is a whole lot of um, knowledge that gets applied when you read this uh, text. You get uh, you apply linguistic knowledge, and you guys have done um, you know uh, grammar school and all that stuff grammar classes and um, in english um, we have something called wordnet or actually it may be in multiple languages uh, that is a subset of the linguistic knowledge you also apply common sense knowledge and a subset of common sense knowledge is in concept net you apply general or broad based knowledge you know that there was an election and on january 20 a new president came to usa that's uh, in dbpedia or wikipedia and dbpedia has and then you apply domain specific knowledge like in drug design or protein design or things of that nature that is one uh, very very powerful thing that happens the second thing that happens is and let me see if i can uh, quickly get to that um, ah, this one here so simultaneously our brain works to uh, combine what is called as um, system one thinking and system two thinking so the human the perception meaning uh, for example computer vision that is uh, more of a system one this system works uh, pretty fast on the data there's massive amount of data that comes through our visual system and we are able to identify objects in those things very fast but the important thing is in the human brain it does not happen in isolation remember when you are when your neural network uh, actually works very rapidly to help you identify an object in an image it is because all those labeling that was done which is akin to the symbolic ai uh, humans you know uh, deliberately uh, either they were uh, you know uh, self tagging or uh, they were uh, asked to uh, tag an annotated lot of data that is fed to and that took a lot of time and deliberate time by people thinking should i call and if you know is binary labeling is much easier but go towards you know uh, something with uh, multiple labels and it's not at all easy so when you're trying to label the data for uh, a suicide let's say uh, you know people expressing suicidal ideas related to suicide that is not easy at all and hence um, uh, but but that is all captured and then yeah you may seem like my uh, cnn performs very fast but in reality the total amount of for that went um, in making that happen is pretty large and you, you can't forget that the point is the important thing is and in community science there is this um, concept of top brain and bottom brain so bottom brain is this um, perception fast and uh, acting thing top brain is this cognition and um, you know uh, reasoning and deliberate thinking bottom brain you know the uh, the system one is highly error prone even though it is fast system two has few, uh, much fewer errors even though it is slow 
while it is slow. So the point here is that our brain is extremely powerful in that it is combining both of them together. The problem with AI has been, you know, uh, to date has been that um, the people, for example, in the semantic web, they have performed only, they have worked only in this area of system two, right? Uh, but, uh, and then there are uh, people in, um, uh, you know, so these are, these where uh, people in logic have worked. And this is, um, this is where people, you know, working on deep learning have worked, right? And the point is that our brain is neither one or the other. It is combination of the both. And th th those kind of things are incredibly powerful. That makes the things incredibly powerful compared to everything that, uh, you know, uh, the current computational systems do. And hence, the, for example, in the AI Institute, one of the big theme is to uh, create hybrid AI systems that connect statistical AI with symbolic AI. I have, uh, you know, we have colleague uh, Biplo Sivasta, he has done more work in planning and that will belong to statistical symbolic AI. We have colleagues, um, uh, you know, Chi and, um, uh, um, uh, and, and Forrest that have done more statistical learning and Puyan uh, and, and some other guys, uh, Jian Jun Hu. Um, these, they are doing statistical learning or, 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 or song. Dr. Song, uh, I done both of these and uh, we are increasingly moving towards combining both of these. Okay, so I hope uh, that was the long answer to a, uh, to a simple question or one question. Uh, can you send me some um, papers that you would think are good for um, exploring NLP and uh, just basically NLP stuff. But NLP is such a vast area. Tell me a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well, I'm I'm looking for methods uh, of NLP that I don't know how to explain it. That so it's it is it's comparing um, one language to another and getting uh, getting a similarity. I, I don't I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> and um, it it does also incorporate uh, out of uh, vocabulary things and um, I guess semantic learning as well. But I don't know how okay, to explain good. it. Because, so my most recent one I've looked at is something called VecMap, and it compare it it it's able to compare two languages without a dictionary by adding them to the same uh, vector space and then um, doing some matrix manipulation on them. I'm, I'm basically just looking for a really good model to base NLP off of. Yeah, the, the, I think your question is uh, too broad to be- Too broad, uh, okay. <laughs> so, I, so here is what I did. I just, uh, in the chat, I just uh, uh, gave you the link to our NLP group. Okay. Uh, so our institute has a group on various topics. For example, uh, this is a group for our class, but then there is a group on uh, NLP. Uh, and you can see there are, the, uh, you know, a lot of uh, exciting articles uh, and papers basically on NLP that, uh, you know, all, at all level that are discussed here. And That's some of the latest. Thing. So you can ask to join that group. Uh, by clicking on that link and say, I want to join and I will give you access to that temp at least okay. temporarily for, for about a semester. Uh, and then if you're active, you can remain. So if you're not active, I'll remove you. Um, but there are, uh, you know, things on um, uh, yeah, conversation and chatbot. Uh, there are, you know, there's a group on everything, uh, social computing and social good and social bad. Deep learning, we have very active group. Health, we are active group. We have, um, mental health active group, ethics, uh, you know, uh, in AI a group. So there are a lot of other topics that we have, um, public health and addiction, we have a group. So these are the areas where we, there's research going on. Knowledge Graph is a, another very active group and e, EAI is uh, exp, uh, explainable AI. So there's a very active group on trust and explanation and interpretation of AI systems. So, uh, when you are ready to kind of, uh, you know, if you want to dig and see, keep up with what's happening in the world on those topics, uh, you can join of the group while you are actively interested and then you can drop out when you're not. 
okay uh, next um i i see that some uh, two three four uh, you know students uh, you know are heavily engaged but i am uh, a bit worried that um, um, some of you guys are uh, you know always very quiet uh, lamb you had your mic on maybe now is the time for you to uh, turn on the mic and ask a question i have a question professor yeah uh you can see the slide 32 okay yeah, let's go to slide 32 uh from this slide we can see that uh, the perception circle tend to use prior prior knowledge mm -hmm. to explain uh, current observation yes. but uh, as the slide shows it may be wrong explanation because our uh, perception knowledge. So my question is that if our perception is wrong, and uh, how should we, if this uh, system continues uh, iteration, this wrong knowledge will be enlarged. And uh, well, my question is, how should we correct this? Uh, but But first of all, I mean, tell me a little bit more about why you think perception uh, you are not are you seeing your knowledge you have wrong knowledge and that's why uh, you'll have a wrong uh, explanation is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, actually, because uh, currently uh, we learn knowledge from data, right? Because uh, we cannot uh, guarantee that every data is right, so we may learn wrong knowledge from data, and this data will in turn guide us to uh, explain our observation wrong. Okay. In yeah. the, um, I think we need to kind of a little bit, um, um, you know, understand the nuance. So a child is exposed to new objects, let's say, and then, uh, you know, um, child picks up a ball and the parent says, that's a ball, or if you know, parent says, catch the ball. And hence, the child knows that that is a ball, right? So the context uh, is, you know, initial labeling, let's say, for uh, the knowledge the child may be learning is because somebody points out that that, you know, gives the label. So child recognize the label for the, um, uh, for the object that, he, that's, that the child sees. And um, uh, you are saying that um, uh, that knowledge is wrong. Well, in most circumstances, in normal circumstances, um, you are observing what is happening in the real world, and so there's a good chance that it will be not wrong. But indeed, they can be wrong, especially today in the world of social media, uh, this conspiracy theory. Or the, you are looking at all this data that says vaccine is bad for you, it can make you dumb, or whatever those things are, right? Conspiracy theories. Um, and there's so called anti vax movement. So it's by even um, it just so happens that the technology exposes human brain to um, wrong knowledge, and hence uh, it could, of course, suppose you are already a subscriber to QAnon, then you are going to uh, perpetuate and you're going to apply that knowledge. Uh, you know what will happen on March fourth, for example, right? They have this funny idea about uh, March fourth. Uh, and 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 they they thought that on June, uh, uh, you know January twenty the the the, the uh, Trump will remain president. Um, so um, uh, so so yes, it is possible that um, incorrect knowledge comes into the system and that it perpetuates and getting out of the cycle is wrong. But that's that is a learning process. So the point here is to note is that. That is a learning process, and uh, if you do have wrong knowledge, yes, you will have incorrect things. There's nothing. That's that's how humans work, and that's how machines work. There's another point, though, I want to make out. And okay, the, thank you. The, thank the, you the, the, the other point that I want, to, the point I want to make out is that we are not only limi um, uh, uh, limited to the knowledge uh, that we learn through our perceptual cycle. Uh, or perception cycle. Uh, imagine that uh, you are reading a book that says a fact that you are not seen, but it says fact that in year so and so there was this what. You are taking it for granted. 
You're taking that as a you know, fact and then put in your knowledge base. So you are learning that way too. And to the extent that that source is trustworthy, you're doing well. Now take further step. Uh, today, I gave you the example earlier that uh, there is this thing of, um, uh, you know, uh, DBpedia and uh, uh, Wikidata and all these other places, right? So what, ha what, what happened there? Uh, that, what happened there is that um, uh, uh, we have um, uh, all these people going on, the, you know, hundreds of thousands of people going and updating Wikipedia or, 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 or Wikidata. And then from that, we create a structured knowledge. So a knowledge was created by collective intelligence process, the process where multiple people collaborated, they argued on a Wikipedia page, editor will come and uh, question you or delete uh, wrong content, uh, collect content that is uh, 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 you know, not truthful or con content that is not supported externally. So um, uh, there, uh, hundreds of thousands of people collaborate and from that we can distill the knowledge and put into the system. So when I'm importing DBpedia into my system, that's what I'm doing. So I'm actually importing uh, the knowledge. It will be as true as uh, the knowledge that is uh, on Wikipedia. Uh, is 100% knowledge on Wikipedia uh, correctorate? No, uh, but uh, there is a process in place to try to make it, uh, to curate it, to, uh, it, there is an editorial process to make it, um, you know, uh, as truthful as possible. And hence the knowledge will be of higher quality. You can expect to be higher quality, uh, much more higher quality than what a, an individual user, individual can produce on his own. Okay, thank you, Professor. Okay, um, now let's see who are uh, still um, very, uh, so I want to hear from uh, uh, someone. Fad, you have some yeah. question or thought? Yes. Or? Yeah. Professor, can you go to slide number 67, please? Sure. Yeah. So in this slide, so uh, this on the right hand, on the left hand side, you have divided uh, these blocks into SC, CC. So is perception is perceptual computing contains both cognitive and semantic computing means is the, is the only difference the cycle which we use in perceptual computing is, means everything is inside so that's why i'm asking no so 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 um um let me uh, explain in first the simplest term and then uh, go go to next level uh, you may remember uh, this, uh, let me see if I can quickly go to the slide of pyramid. Here is a very simple slide. Okay. Yeah. And what is happening in this slide is that it, there is a sensor, right? A sensor is, um, uh, the other day in my class, I showed a sensor that is a blood, uh, a blood pressure, uh, you know, uh, meter. And it gives you some number, 150. That's data. Then you have um, uh, 150, uh, is, we say it's a systolic blood pressure of 150 mmHg, that is information. Then we say it is elevated blood pressure. And, um, uh, uh, you know, it should be managed. Uh, and it then it says, uh, that, then we, that is uh, knowledge. And then we go to, uh, you know, actionable information or perception uh, or, or, or um, abstraction, uh, whether it is thyroid, hypothyroidism or hypertension. These are the two diseases that cause elevated blood pressure. And the medication for each of them is different. The point is that there is so much of the data around the world, or uh, that is like 150 or uh, systolic blood pressure, 150 mmHg. There's all these data around the world. There are 50 billion uh, internet of things uh, actively pushing out data on the internet, right? But which data is relevant to solving which problem of human interest? That is the hard problem. So the action, I may have a lot of data. I may be taking blood pressure every day, two times a day, uh, and multiple readings every time I go. But the action to be taken 
is uh, you know the uh, lifestyle change the uh, medication whatever i have to manage my uh, um, um, uh, hypertension so the um, process of going from low level data to understanding what the, the data means that that this data of 150 of systolic pressure means it's an elevated blood pressure it, it's a cognition to something make it actionable the way i define perceptual computing is the one where which data where the data is made actionable where you can do something with the data uh, to affect the change in the world or for benefiting human that is a at a level where I have a clinical abstraction of hyperthyroidism or hypertension. Humans have come up with this classification of disease, right? There's nothing like that in the physical world without humans. Uh, you know, you know, it is the humans who have classified all of those things through their education, learning, observation, so on and so forth. So what we are trying to do is how do you convert raw data into actions and that is uh, you know the whole uh, uh, I, uh, th that the challenges in doing that is what i'm um, you know uh, showing and what i show here is that so in the um, in the um, literature we have semantic computing we have cognitive computing and you have perceptual computing and i have tried to bring all of them together and uh, help you understand the sort of machinery we have to build to uh, really make meaningful uh, you know uh, decisions so it says see here the top what is the top abstractions for decision making prediction and action that's really the most important thing right you make money by taking the right decisions by investing the stock in the right time or taking the selling at the right time you take uh, uh, you know decisions about uh, logistics of how a vehicle will move through traffic you you know all those things are done and to do that what i showed you is that semantic computing is not enough but i showed you what is what are the example of semantic computing cognitive computing is not enough i showed you what cognitive computing means and the examples thereof and perceptual computing as it comes together with semantic and cognitive computing all working together to reach this top, uh, you know, state here of uh, abstraction uh, and uh, you know, um, you know, abstraction for decision making, prediction, action. So this whole thing is about how do you build a computational machinery for uh, you know really that purpose. And you know, so you see, uh, it is raw data uh, with ontologies, I data. That is that is part of what is called semantic computing. And uh, you know, uh, taking a, a whole bunch of historic data and using the knowledge base and demographic, uh, demographic data to understand really what is happening with the human and how bad is uh, human this human's uh, elevated blood pressure is. That is this cognitive computing. And going from this raw data ultimately to you see all these arrows going up to come to this uh, state of being able to decide something, make a good decision. On the right hand side, there are two examples. An example in the healthcare uh, domain in asthma. So you have a lot of asthma. In asthma, we have uh, 20 different, 29 different parameters in our study of asthma, like number of steps you take, uh, how many times you had cough. Uh, uh, then, then you know, uh, AQI is the quality, air quality index. FEV1 is your lung functioning. You're mentioning all these things. From that, you're getting health signal abstraction, saying there is a high pollen. And then from that, you get health condition insights and treatment that your asthma is moderately controlled, take inhaled corticosteroid regularly. That's what doctor would do by looking at all the data, by interviewing you, by doing all the labs. So I'm trying to show that to go from data to decision making, uh, how I can construct a machinery and I Components of that machinery is semantic computing, cognitive computing, uh, per, uh, per, uh, perceptual computing, all interacting together, all working together. Okay, um, next uh, chance for somebody else to ask a question.
So, uh, 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 Mr. Li, Xiao Guang Li, do you have a question? Or uh, I, I assume you are referring to me. Uh, I see here as Xiao uh, uh, Guang Li. Uh, hello, Professor. Uh, I, I'm no more question. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, Julian, do you have any question? Um, I don't really have, I don't know if I can really put it into a question, but I was wondering, uh, is the semantic part in the future when we have enough computational power, will it even really be necessary for us to provide our own annotations or really anything instead of just slamming random data into the computer and kind of like a child growing up and then having it and then introducing the question after the fact? Yeah, so you see, the point is that um, um, in the real world, we are constantly doing labeling, right? Uh, you know, we, we uh, teach a slide, uh, teach a uh, child that this is a Toyota vehicle versus this is Honda vehicle. Mm. And, you know, so that is a, and there is a visual, you know, pattern, and then we name that pattern with that label, right? So this is a this is a very fundamental thing that always happens in the world, right? And that has to happen in a computational system if the computer system is going to interact with the humans. So uh, I uh, and, and the point on and the process of labeling the data is uh, within all the, the words that we are given is uh, semantic computing. Uh, semantic comp one of the key components of semantic computing is, is labeling the data. It's also called semantic annotation. So the semantic annotation, whether you call it out or not, is uh, endemic. It's, it's going to be everywhere. Tyler? Do you think it would... Sorry, go ahead. Do you think it would be productive to try to explore ways that you could talk to a machine as you would talk to a human so that you avoid actually making explicit labels. You just give it all the data that you would give a human and then you give it the language interaction that you would give a human and it could potentially form its own labels. Well, yeah, or is that too we, no, abstract? Uh, we, we have to, uh, whenever we talk, we use words, we use phrases, we use entities. That's labeling. There's no, there's no getting around to that. Uh, two humans communicate by having common vocabulary. So, so the, those vocabulary terms are labels. And right, but and so instead we have of to have that. So, uh, uh, in fact, what is happening is one of the core thing about AI is that we are building more and more AI, AI solutions that involve uh, interacting with and communicating with uh, humans. Uh, one subset of that is called conversational AI. But there are, you know, we're building robots that talk to humans or, or uh, give, a, 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 you know, uh, uh, make coffee for humans. We are, uh, you know, uh, we are making uh, vehicles uh, uh, take that they take humans. So hence, vehicles are also interact directly with the humans. Uh, so we are making more and more machinery um, where AI is essentially the uh, enabler for uh, humans to interact with this environment. The environment may include vehicle. Environment may include um, uh, a, a, a coffee machine that makes coffee for you environment may involve a refrigerator that, that talks to you saying i am low on milk so whenever you are going to communicate you're going to have uh, words uh, and, and that means that those are the concepts or labels like oh i today my blood pressure is high uh, i need to go out and do more exercise so these are the things that you have to talk right doctor says uh, that uh, looks like uh, you are not taking your control or medication. That's why you're getting asthma attack. Mm. So we're going to have to really deal with, uh, you know, essentially these labels and hence semantics. Yeah. Semantics simply means meaning and use of data. And uh, the data by itself, um, you know, is often useless. Uh, like somebody says 150. What is 150? 150 doesn't mean anything really. Unless you say it is 150 mg. Now it means something, but it means only partially. It doesn't mean too much. Then you say, uh, for most people, what matters is it is, um, um, you know, uh, it is it is uh, elevated blood pressure, and you should manage it. 
actively that is what is uh, you know uh, uh, useful now in this of course everything you know everything that happens uh, just raw data is extremely uh, invaluable very very uh, extremely uh, does not have value rather raw data doesn't have too much value think about uh, you know suppose the temperature is um, uh, 40 degrees versus 42 degrees uh, well basically uh, first of all you say is are you talking about centigrade or fahrenheit in the first case if centigrade is hot fahrenheit is cold relatively cold not too cold but somewhat cold and you probably want a jacket but what are you really interested in you're not interested in really 40 or 42 you're interested in is it hot or cold for me and if i'm going to step out if it's cold for me i should take a jacket right mm -hmm. so these uh, uh, the building block for being able to do this in a machine requires semantics humans right. are good at semantics anyway they, we do that all the time okay thank you tyler you had question let's let we can have that last question uh, I got I got a question actually. Okay, Doctor Shit, <coughs> Doctor Shit, what you, uh, what do you think that is the most impressive work so far that uh, integrate human cognition process with AI? Oh, what is the most um... like? What do you think? I mean, I know it's still a developing. Uh, no, I mean every every year, every uh, every other year, we have, we get to see, um, uh, you know, more and more um, uh, 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 I think capabilities. Uh, you know, there are some milestones. For example, uh, when um, uh, so 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 the, earlier we talk about Watson. And and uh, Roger Shank uh, really, um, you know, uh, uh, took IBM to task for uh, claiming too much of what Jeopardy does, uh, you know. But when IBM's uh, Watson uh, defeated Jeopardy, um, uh, you know, um, uh, experts, that is a very big fit. One, whatever you call it, and the best the best word for that is still cognitive computing. The uh, you know the, the the IBM Watson program the word that you would use for them is cognitive computing. Uh, does it mean it truly understands everything? No. Mm. But does it mean that it does the kind of tasks that would require understanding? Yes. It kind of you know uh, uh, fakes fakes into doing the right thing. Okay. But now what is happening is that um, let's say that uh, we build uh, now even though most recent thing may not be a high flying thing like um, putting up a game show and um, um, a computer is one and the two experts on the two sides and uh, then computer beats you know um, the, these experts easily um, uh, maybe it is not visually that thing but every we are making more and more progress in building uh, you know this this um, Google Assistant or Siri or Siri is not so good yet, but Alexa, they are becoming smarter, becoming smarter and smarter every day. For example, um, uh, earlier you can only ask one question and then uh, it will answer the question. Second question you ask, the, the system does not remember what you asked earlier. So you, your, 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 your tra historical thing, um, uh, the computer does not know, so it will look to you dumb. Now, uh, it does have uh, understanding of the last few questions. So it will, uh, even if you are not explicit in your last question, it will use the context from the previous question to understand what you are trying to say. Okay. Um, uh, the, then they are trying to retain the information uh, about what you asked last time, a few days ago. And, and, and then, so there's this personalization going on. All of these are important um, uh, you know, uh, 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 things, by the way, I happen to like uh, things in triples. So I like uh, uh, context, personalization, and uh, abstraction. I like semantic, uh, cognitive, and perceptual, and, 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 and so on. So I like um, 
uh, 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 the um, uh, uh, shallow infusion, semi-deep infusion, and deep infusion. But the point here is that uh, today's um, uh, and as the um, uh, we are people are working hard to build uh, empathy and emotion into robots. Now that would be you know understanding the human uh, experiences in you know with with the uh, with the emotions that becomes also very powerful. So. Uh, 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 what is I, I'll put it different way. Uh, we make we made a extremely powerful language model, GPT three, and there is one followed by that. Uh, that is there is one seventy five billion parameters, and there is one with trillion parameters that Google has built, and is made public also. And now uh, there are enough articles. Uh, and you can follow again that NLP group that I shared that will that talk about the failure of these language models in understanding language. So they can do great, uh, you know, quality 99% accurate translation. They can do, uh, they can answer seemingly correct answer, but without understanding anything. So we can easily uh, show that it is not understanding uh, a language at all. And um, now we are understanding that to understand the language you'll have to feed to it knowledge and hence um, so our recent uh, papers from my group uh, uh, really uh, focuses on this particular area uh, and they, these are very uh, very good uh, you know uh, imp uh, these are improvements over what we have now and so just keep on going but uh, yeah the, it just happens that uh, our field is so active and every th every day some new things ha keep on happening all right, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've uh, done one more class. Uh, I, ho I hope you enjoyed and learned from this class um, and, and also understood uh, some uh, nuances, some challenges, some complexity of these things and why the things are not as simple as what people made out to be. So by giving the name neuron, neuron uh, and implying uh, because brain have brain and neurons, People think that AI system is very smart. Indeed, it is not. Uh, 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 neural, neural, uh, by uh, saying that we have a, a massive computational power uh, that uses, I recently gave a little talk on AI and sustainability. And one single training of a language model takes more power, electricity, than a thousand people uh, uh, use in their entire lifetime. Can you imagine that? So this is not coming cheap, right? The amount of power that brain use that that computer uses to try and do intelligent computations compared to what brain uses. I think I don't know if I don't quote me, but the the human brain uh, uses something like less than ten watts of power. It's and, roughly and, twenty watts. Roughly twenty. Okay. So. Um, uh, um, and compared to these massive computers, uh, you know, they use kilowatt hours, right? And and yet, it takes so, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of the work that my students work, uh, they take, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, these uh, V100 based uh, systems that are uh, v, uh, uh, NVIDIA GPUs that take two weeks to, uh, you know, compute. And we bought a petaflop, a five petaflop system now, and even some of the problems are not not getting solved even on that very fast enough, fast enough. So we are keeping on going with this massive spending of power to do the computation uh, that has a limited value, uh, just to prove that our algorithm is better than their algorithm. And while brain does fantastic um, work with much less, uh, you know, uh, investment in energy and such. Why? How? Right? And I think so we have a lot more to learn there. So on one hand, there are some tasks that AI systems beat humans hands down. So if, for, for example, uh, if you have to read radiology images and uh, find the tumor, potential tumor, this uh, we know that computer programs, the AI you know, uh, systems, deep learning, uh, you know, uh, base uh, programs 
do better than human experts do. But explanation, they can't do it and humans have to be there. And there are seemingly simpler problem in understanding that, you know, even in spite of spending this massive amount of computational power to create language models, they simply can't do that. Recently, a GPT system uh, guided, the, you know, you know so, so a hypothetical patient talked to GPT and the GPT ended up advising the patient to commit suicide. Well, um, uh, how should you prevent that? So by the way, that gives me the segue to the next week. Um, uh, my uh, former PhD student and now a uh, associate professor um, and faculty at George Mason University, Hemant uh, Purohit, he works on um, uh, 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 humanitarian uh, computing or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, or humanitarian informatics. And um, uh, he'll be talking about, and we had a, recently an article that talks about the different aspects of knowledge graph that co that computes that that captures norms of society and many other things anyway he's going to be taking our uh, next class i have put up the paper that he's going to be discussing um so we'll we'll see you in the next class uh, you know for that all right i hope you enjoyed the class and uh, we'll meet again next week uh, you are welcome like suppose anybody wants some particular uh, follow on material like the question was, how, you know, about uh, what is the good uh, material on NLP? You are welcome to put a comment uh, to the corresponding class, and you know, tag me, and I will be happy to uh, give my the best answer I can give. Can you go back to the groups? I can't figure. I can't find the other groups you have on LinkedIn. Yeah, uh, myself. So can you? Um, can I get in the chat? Um, let me show one thing, guys. Uh, but but before you, you know, so the, the simpler thing is the following. You guys, yeah. uh, AISC.ai is our um, uh, uh, institute, right? AISC.ai. And in this, you'll find, um, you know, um, for example, uh, joining us. No, not this one. Uh, this is about race. Uh, about research themes and all that. And you see here, the link, there's a link of uh, discussion groups. So you click on this and it shows you various discussion groups that we have, at least some okay, of them. Okay, great. Excellent. And you can Thank then you. click on that. And uh, if you're not a member, uh, you'll be able to ask here to say, I want to join this group. So that is the uh, easy process that you can follow all the time. Okay. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye. Um, Professor, I did want to say the reason today I didn't have my camera on like I usually do is I've been feeling kind of sick, so I didn't want to turn it on. Okay. Uh, it's okay for a reason. Otherwise, it's a great, a good idea to turn it on. Yeah, I should be back on next week. Sure. All right. Thank you.